confession. So when I picked up the guitar and started playing music, I was, you know, I just felt music was this universe that I, I wanted to, to partake. And uh, I didn't understand what's going on. And one of the things that I didn't understand at all was how people play all these notes, all these ideas so fast and just like... How can they think so fast? How can they move around the guitar in, in, in a certain way that express these ideas? And you know, as, as a teenager just picking up the guitar and trying to play a couple of chords, this is, this is quite mind-boggling. And what I want to talk about today is six exercises that combines heart, ear, soul, body, it's more than three. What we're gonna do is talk about specific exercises that I started working, uh, coming to New York and, and you know checking out people in New York. And these are things that I really believe that help a lot to feel more free, to be more fluent. And I wanna share this with you guys. I think when we're practicing these exercises, we still need to think about the idea of the mind. How are we approaching it? What are we thinking? What's the inner dialogue or monologue that we have in our head when we're playing this? We need to think about the heart. What those sounds make us feel, even if it's just a chromatic scale, even, even if it's just a shape and it's very technical, still trying to imagine what sensation we experience. And then in terms of body, listening to our body, trying to understand what feels good and how we can kind of let go a little bit and let our body take care of some of the, of the positions, if you will. Again, just the micromanagement does not need to go through us in the sense of when we're practicing a three note scale or three or four note scale we don't really need to tell our body too much what to do because at the end of the day our body knows better what to do you know if you're picking up a glass ah, a cup of tea you know this action is tremendously complex so you know, trying to verbalize it and, and trying to tell myself, ah, you know, push uh, muscle number five or two, two degrees down, you know, this is just not gonna work. But letting our system figure it out while we kind of observe is sort of an ideal when you practice these technical elements. These exercises, I do believe, will allow a better sync between the right and left hand and better flexibility when meeting different patterns. So that means just being more free and being more connected to the instrument. I definitely saw a lot of improvements since I started playing these exercises and each one is targeting a little different things. It's like going to the gym to a specific kind of muscle group. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go over each one of these exercises. They're simple, but they do take some focus and practice. So let's dive in. One, this is kind of a new thing that I realized uh, recently. So when you're picking something, let's say I'm just playing an arpeggio. now. I don't want to talk about the arpeggio. What I do want to talk about is the sort of shape of picking. So one of the things that I find extremely hard is if I'm descending an arpeggio, and it could be anything, it could be a scale, it could be anything, the shape of hitting down and up. So basically kind of like inner picking, if you will. So basically if I'm playing this down, up, this shape, is not that easy for me. So I found that I need to work and spend time on this specific motion. And honestly, since I started doing that, a few things in my hands started clicking in even more and, and allowing me just to be able to play some stuff that I'm hearing in a more clear and stronger way. So check this exercise out. Basically, the motion is this. We just take two notes. They're kind of random, but again, not completely random. I'm taking C and A, and I'm moving this shape. I'm playing down, up, and that's important. Down, up, and I'm moving this shape a little bit. And just going back, so I'm just gonna do that for a couple times. And I'm trying to pay attention to the way I'm picking and how this feels against the strings and what is the motion 
Again, just try to raise my awareness. Not try to control the body in a way, but just try to see how it feels and what's going on here. I think what I do usually, I'll put a click on, for example. Ooh, I have a new song that came out about a week ago, if you haven't checked it out yet. Ta-da! So... Just looping this and doing the exercise in time with that. And I can move the exercise half step up. So, skipping. There's a PDF if you need it. So like you see, I'm playing the same shape, but when I decided I want to move up a half step, I just basically skip one note when I descend, and then I de ascend again. And I would play it sometimes on different strings, and play in different tempos, and play in different subdivisions. So it could be 60 notes, or triplets, or 8 notes. The point of this is really making sure we control the inner picking. If you dig this and finding this helpful, the best way to support is Patreon. There's a ton of PDF, including for the whole video here. Yeah, thank you. Two, very simple exercise, but extremely, extremely effective. I'm gonna take one chromatic shape, just four notes from C to E flat. And I'm gonna loop it again using a click or a drum machine, whatever you want. And I'm gonna try and really try to sync the two hands, trying to control it as much as I can. Check it out. I'll start slow, trying to control the sound. Eight notes, triplets. And then what I'll start doing with this shape specifically, I'll start moving it around. So instead of just playing those four notes, I'll start moving them around as well, up and down, different directions. So sometimes when I have an exercise, I literally write down the exercise, you know, C to C sharp ascending. Okay, so of course I can do descending, ascending, descending, different shapes, so I can find different permutations very easily. Maybe I'll skip a note or basically start from C and then D, so whole steps or minor thirds. Different variations of this exercise are awesome. The point of this is really trying to hone in on this this alternate picking where we control the right hand in a clear way and are able to articulate. Doesn't matter if it's a scale, the sounds and articulation is really connected to the right hand. So I think, again, as guitar players, we often talk about scales and shapes, which is of course great, but there is less attention to the right hand, which I think is a huge part. I mean, it's clear there are two hands when we play, so we need to focus on that as well. Question, what would be the best advice that you would give yourself if you were you? What? Three, chromatic scale, but with hammer on and pull off. So we have this kind of sound we're gonna deal with. And we're gonna basically start from this C and N and this C, but we're thinking about the scale. This is the motion. And I'll shift the strings in the right place in the sense of if this is B natural, I'll probably go to this C. 
thinking this kind of C tonality. And also, once we're clear with this kind of shape, we can move that to other shapes. Check it out in time solely. And of course, we can play it with different subdivisions. Later on, we can also take that shape, that sound and physical motion to play chords and shapes. But again, the same motion that we just did is really, really useful on guitar. And it is actually some, some gym effort. There is some, some finger strength that we need to obtain in order to do this in time. It's not that easy, but again, try to focus on the balance between the notes and the locking in time. If you're feeling this out, please don't forget to subscribe and dropping a comment and maybe even hitting the like button. There's a fly here. Okay. Four, this is a big one, because if you wanna play these shapes and colors that are ascending in a rapid way, using hammer and pull-offs is a big part of, of guitar. So this is kind of an intro to that sound and technique. So what I, I used to do a lot was just taking a shape and playing this as hammer on and pull-offs and kind of looping that. it out and also play it in time shapes, although they're just shapes and they're not really music just quite yet, they will allow us later on to play different shapes that are also these kind of pairing of two notes per string with hammer-ons and pull-offs that will give us a lot of music. So by working on this technical exercise and just locking in and honing in on these sounds, we're allowing that to happen. I would also do all the variations. So if one, two, three, four, and then I'll do two, three, two, four, and three, four. Some of them, of course, are weaker fingers. So I'll really try and make sure that we um, pay attention, if you will, to the balance and the accuracy. This is a big part of it. Again, not just succeeding, but gracefully doing that listening, trying to lock in, trying to imagine the sound that we're making and trying to also breathe because that's that's also a big deal that I'm thinking more and more like, am I breathing? Am I giving oxygen to the system? You know, when I'm trying to play things and trying to process information. Five, a cool exercise that's really like lifting weights is um, basically taking this area of the guitar, uh, the lower, two frets because they're just a little heavier and really pushing with the finger and then just going string by string it's like literally gym when i get to um, the b string i'll kind of accelerate for a second i'll go up here the E string usually. I'm really trying to get that band. Now I would do that also in time. And also I would do it with one, two, one, three, one, four, two, three, two, four, and three, four. So 
you definitely feel the burn. I think, again, don't go crazy, but doing it for three, four minutes a day in the beginning of your workout is pretty cool. Again, don't go too hard, but just try to find a balance and make sure that you are really pushing the string. It's like, you know, sort of like, um, yeah, it's sort of like you can lift weights in a proper way or uh, in an improper way. So I think like we really want to pay the attention and, and try to kind of get, get the most out of it. Even if it's not, you know, the hardest string to push, still we want to try and, and reinforce the stability and the control of our muscles. Six, this is a really fun one that I started doing last couple of months, just taking a random shape. Um, it could be a four note chromatic shape, for example. And I'll try to find stuff that's like not that convenient maybe. Ah, what did I do? Okay. And I'll just play it also in time with a metronome, with a click, with a groove, whatever you want, but in time. And I'll try to move it up and down the scale. And I oftentimes also switch the directions. If I'm descending and the shape was, I might do it opposite. So it would become. And then sometimes on one string. mistake so you know you'll find things that are like not easy for you and you'll find like sometimes the the shape to be confusing and we just want to try these different angles right it's like you know basically training and putting those cones and running in, in different angles that are like even more trickier when you play football or something yeah you might not do that at the game but it's definitely a good exercise thanks so much for watching guys i hope this was helpful and interesting and shed some light on things that you know you can work on and i'll see you in the next video peace Thank mm -hmm. you.